Uh, so, well, as we as we think about moving to Canvas, we're we're starting um, if, um, some Canvas uh, you know presentations. We call them the Canvas Hour, and you'll always hear about them um, through Susan and and Kathy. And today, this is really our kickoff. So, Brittany has been a a, a pilot uh, participant. Well, two two semesters, and and then now she's in she's in Canvas again. So she agreed to do our our initial our launch um, for our presentations, and she's going to talk just a little bit. Oh, well, you know, for for the hour about Canvas and what you saw in Blackboard or what it might look like in Canvas, and then as we go on through February and March and April, May until November, probably, you know, we'll have more of these Canvas hours, and probably they'll be targeted right to discussions and assessments and quizzes and everything you want to know about Canvas. So with that, thank you for um, coming today. And I'm going to turn it over to our very own Brittany Lockhart. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. You see the PowerPoint over here coming through? Yes. Uh, as she mentioned, my name is Brittany Lockhart. I am in the Human Performance Division of the School of Nursing and Health Professions. And yes, I've been uh, kind of with the Canvas pilot as we've been launching it over the past two years here at UIW. And one of the reasons that I um, volunteered to jump into it is because I used Canvas at the university I was at before this. And so I've been able to play around in it a lot and fully online versus in-person classes and kind of really understand those features. Um, and I really like it. And so I was excited to jump into it. Uh, I am here to give you kind of a major oversight of um, what Canvas will be like. And as you can see, kind of comparing it to Blackboard and how things will be different. We're not going to stay in a PowerPoint the whole time. Uh, I did do kind of a comparison so you can get the vision of how things look different between Blackboard and Canvas. And so we'll walk through that and then we can actually go into some Canvas courses and click around and see how they work. Um, I will do my best to keep up with uh, looking at questions in the chat as we go as well. Uh, but please uh, don't hesitate to just interrupt me if you have a question. Um, it's better for us to handle it right there while we're on that topic, probably. So, all right, without further ado, let's go ahead and start to see how Canvas and Blackboard are similar and different. So starting from your main page, when you're coming in, what we would call the dashboard, uh, you're probably familiar with seeing this view in Blackboard where you have your courses and you can sort, they're sorted for you by semester. And um, you can kind of have your whole menu of all of your semesters there, which can get a little overwhelming. In Canvas, um, you can see a few fun differences right away. You can color code your courses. You can add an image to each class, um, which is fun, yes, but also makes it really easy to find them and know exactly which course you're trying to get to just visually. Um, the other nice thing about the Canvas dashboard is you choose which classes you want to come up on your dashboard. So it can be all of your classes for this semester. Um, you can leave classes from past semesters up so you have quick, easy access to those as well. Um, whatever you want to show is what you get to make out of your dashboard. And then when you go into a specific course, we have our course menu on the left, and this is how it looks in Blackboard. And Canvas is really pretty similar. Um, it's also on the left-hand side, and it's just kind of a list here of all of your different tools and features that you have access to. Um, you can sort them in whichever order. You can kind of drag and drop them where you want them to go, and you can uh, decide which ones you want visible to students and which ones you don't. Like you can see these down here, I have access to, uh, but the students can't see them because they have a little eye crossed out. So fairly similar so far. And then when you go into actually creating modules or putting your content into the site, uh, in Blackboard, maybe you're more of a folder user or you use the actual, oops, excuse me, module um, app. It's just kind of a little difference in what icon shows up here. But we have our Blackboard where you would maybe have it done by folders. And you would click on that to actually go into that chapter. And in Canvas, when you're on your main module page, you'll see just kind of going down the line, all of your modules on one page. And each one of them can be collapsed so that all you see is the main title of it. Or they can be expanded so that you can see all of the items that are in it. 
And so now let's say we clicked on one of those, right? So here we are in Blackboard, I'm in my chapter one. And so again, you can see each of the items kind of down the list here. But if I wanna get out of chapter one in Blackboard, now I have to hit the back button, right? To go back to my main modules before I can move anywhere else. But in Canvas, again, all I had to do is open up the folder and so it expanded and I can see all of my items here. And I can easily kind of bounce from chapter one and scroll down to chapter two, et cetera. Now, when I'm in Canvas, let's say I click on this chapter one objectives here, and then that's what this little image is down at the bottom is it shows you whatever was on that page. So that's what would take over my screen now. And I even have the little next and previous buttons from here, which would just slowly take me through, you know, one item at a time. And so this is how I tell my students to tackle our modules. I tell them to come in and click on the first item. You know, they'll read my welcome message and then they'll hit the next button. They'd read the objectives, hit the next button, download the PowerPoint, et cetera. And so it's just an easy way for them to know what's the next thing that they need to do. Looks like somebody's needing to get into the meeting. Um, but again, if they're coming in and they wanna go straight to something like straight to doing the assignment, they can click directly onto that item and go right there. And so you see my little celebration here. This is the thing that I've loved the most and will continue to sing the praises of for Canvas. And that's their auto-created is kind of how I describe them, their course links. Now, I don't know if you ever tried this in Blackboard, but I never knew where I wanted to put assignments. If I was making a module for my class, do I wanna put the assignment right there in the middle of the module? Or do I wanna have a tab over on the side that's called assignments? and they go there to get their assignment. I mean, like, what are the students gonna want? Are some gonna try one spot and some the other? So I would usually do both. I would put it in an assignments tab and then I had to build my own course link to have it also connected inside the module. Well, the way Canvas works is when you're building your module, if I wanted to create an assignment right here while I'm in my module, I can, but it's also going to put that assignment over in your assignments tab for you. So it's automatically gonna put it in both places. And then the opposite of that also works. Like if I was just creating assignments and putting them in my assignment tab, okay, now I'm ready to build my chapter two module. I can just add an item and I can tell it I want it to put the assignment right there as well. So you can actually have them linked in, in multiple places. And it's just a much smoother process without you having to always think about the back end of that. Can modules and assignments be made available for certain dates and times like Blackboard? Yes, they can. You can definitely um, set them to be open and close at certain times. And you can also put in, um, what's the word I'm not thinking of right now, where you can say you have to be able to get an 80% on this before you can move on to the next module. What's the word for that? Mastery pass. I mean, the are using a mastery pass or? Yeah, setting the... I don't know why I can't think of the word. When we go in there, we look at it, I'll probably see it. But it is part of the mastery path plan, yeah. Prerequisite? Prerequisite? Sure. Those kinds of things, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. And so, you know, again, uh, Blackboard's kind of like this as well, but you'll see each different kind of item that you put in a module has different little icons that go with it. So you can see I have a page here. That would be like adding an item in Blackboard. So if you were just gonna do something where you needed a text box, maybe you wanted to add an, uh, a, a file or even embed a video in there, you know, in Blackboard, you probably would have done insert item. In Canvas, those are called pages. And we can still do external links, taking you to other websites or other assignments elsewhere. And then again, that's what the assignment tab looks like. Do students already have access to both Blackboard and Canvas? I believe my, the answer to that would be, if they have classes that are being taught in Canvas, then they have access to Canvas. But otherwise, not until they have courses that are assigned in there. Is that correct? Uh, speaking of course links, again, the other thing that I really like about this is it's very easy, this is an announcement that I sent out to my class, to do course links, even named what the actual, you know, link or assignment are named right in the middle of an announcement. And you can do more than one. So as you can see, I gave them a nice friendly little reminder, 
Now, I mean, if they walked straight through my module, they would have seen all of those in order and kind of should have known exactly what to do. But this is just one more helper that you can put in there for them, sending an announcement and telling them exactly what they need to do and even having them linked. And so they can check those off their list and make sure that they didn't miss anything. So um, Canvas assignments are pretty self-explanatory and similar to uh, Blackboard assignments. Um, you can assign the point value and the assignment group. And I'm going to show you assignment group again in a little bit. Um, but this would be like if you had um, your course broken down into different percentages, where maybe a certain part of their score is lab work, a certain part of their score is, you know, um, weekly quizzes, et cetera. So each of those would be an assignment group. So while you're creating that assignment group, you can tell them right here, you know, what, what, uh, which one you want that to count towards. Um, you also get to choose your submission type. And so if they're submitting something online, you have all these different options of a text entry. Maybe they're sending you a website, like if they made a blog post somewhere else and they need to submit that to you, um, they can do a media recording and then also file uploads. And the cool thing is when you select file uploads, you get you also have the choice if you want to limit them to what kinds of files they can upload. So if you want to make sure everyone turns in a PDF or an Excel spreadsheet, you can tell it to only allow that kind of file. Uh, okay, so did I see that you can send a reminder or message to multiple sections at one time? So that would be if they are combined into one Canvas class. So if you have um, a class that you teach multiple sections of, like you have section one and two, you could have it created as just one class in Canvas. And so that way you don't have to, you know, duplicate everything over to the second section. You can have them there together. And then typically when you do things from that point, you can choose, do you want it to go to both sections? Do you want it to only go to one section, et cetera? But they would need to be built together as, as one course in Canvas. Excellent. Um, and so that's one of the things I really like is being able to kind of limit what files you accept sometimes because the number of times I've sent students messages back saying, you know, I can't open this in this program, or maybe if you don't have a Mac, you know, stop sending me pages, you know, so you can tell them, no, it has to be a Word document or it has to be a PDF, and then you wouldn't have to worry about that. Uh, and then um, another really great thing that has been so, so helpful, especially right now with COVID, is when you create Canvas assignments, you have the option to set multiple due dates. Um, of course, you also see we can do group assignments here and peer review, but right here, this section, um, it's going to auto default to assign to everyone, and then you would just set your due date. And again, here's where you can show where it's available from and until. Um, but I could take off everyone here, and I could just start typing a student's name and find them in the drop down menu that appears. Um, so if I had a student who wasn't in class and I'm giving them an extension on the assignment we did in class, I can um, make it so that just they are allowed to turn it in later. If I give a student permission to take an exam early because they're going to be out of town, I can set it so only they access it sooner. Um, and another time that I've used that is in discussion boards. I typically have an author each week that is writing the post and then everyone else in the class is gonna read it and respond to them and get the discussion going. So I have the author set with their due date for when it's due and then everyone else in the class um, set for the due date that they need to read it by and um, respond. So I can, again, with COVID and the number of people that have been out, you'll see when we get to my grade book, I have a lot of things where there's only one of them that I need to grade, grade one of these, grade one of those. And it's because of all these individual exceptions I've been able to make for students. Yes, definitely a great um, feature for helping students with accommodations as well. Let's see. So um, there was a question, can the media recording be a recording of a presentation? Uh, yes. Um, there's, I guess, really multiple ways that they could add presentation recordings for you, but they can definitely upload an MP4 or link to specific, you know, video sites as well. So it could be kind of either way you would want to see that. Okay, so back to a little bit of comparison. If we look at what it looks like for a student to submit an assignment in Blackboard, they would have an option to do a text submission or attach a file. 
And then of course they had a space where they could leave you some comments as well. Now in Canvas, um, a couple of different things here. It's auto set to allow unlimited attempts, but you can change that if you want. Um, I kind of like it because if they submitted the wrong file and they need to do another one, I don't have to go behind the scenes and allow them that permission to do more attempts. I just tell them, hey, I'm gonna grade whatever came in right before the due date. Um, in this instance, I think I told them all they could, their only option was to do a text entry. But if I said you could have done a file upload or a text entry, then they'd have a little drop down menu here and they just pick which way they wanna submit and then they can start their entry. Um, another cool thing in Canvas is they get this little tracker bar. So they can see the assignments available. They can see the next thing they need to do is upload it. And then it even kind of shows them like, hey, you've uploaded it, but you haven't hit submit yet. And then they can even see whether or not I've graded it yet. Also, even though we did have a comment section in Blackboard, in Blackboard, you had to give a grade before you could provide any kind of comment to the student. And I don't know about you, but there were a lot of times that I just needed to write the student back and say, hey, I think you attached the blank worksheet instead of the one that you filled in, or you know, for one reason or another, you attached the wrong assignment. And so in uh, Canvas, you don't even have to grade anything yet. It's really just the chat feature specific in this assignment between you and the student. So you can message them. And as long as their notifications are set um, the right way, then, or the, my preferred way, I call it the right way, then it goes directly to their email even, and they get your message. The other really cool thing is if they message you um, within this assignment, it'll come directly to your email. So I don't even have to come into this assignment to continue that chat with them. I can reply directly from my email and it'll come into this comment thread for them right here in this assignment. So again, just kind of a nice teacher and student user friendly feature. If you use discussion boards, um, they're really quite similar, but there's one thing about them that's just opposite. In Blackboard, you would have your list of your forums, your list of discussion boards, and you see the name of each forum and you see your prompt right there from that main discussion board page. Uh, and then you'd click on one and then you'd come in and see the individual student threads that you could then click and read from there. And Canvas just does one step kind of reverse. From the main discussion page, what you see is just the title of each of the discussions. And then when you click on one, that's when you would go into it, see the prompt and right from there, a student would hit reply and you would see their responses below. Um, and the students responses, let's say you had a student respond and then a bunch of students respond right underneath them. You can collapse that whole student's communication so that you can easily get down to the next student if you need to from there also. So they function very similarly. Now, if we were going to compare tests and quizzes in the two programs, again, pretty similar. Blackboard happens to call them tests. Canvas happens to call them quizzes. Uh, but as you can see, they really look pretty similar. In Blackboard, you can kind of see your path of which questions you've answered and whatnot. Multiple choice questions with the point value out to the side. And in Canvas, uh, again, you get your questions kind of down the page. Um, you can flag them. So if you have a question that you know you want to come back to, you can do that and also see the point values out to the side, et cetera. Did somebody have a question? That might be you, Kathy. Okay. Um, and then I just wanted to mention you have a lot of the same features with the test. You can set a time limit, tell it to shuffle answers, show one question at a time. You can choose whether or not they can review after the submission, whether they can see their exams again or not. Um, and yes, you have the ability to adjust time and a half for individual students. Again, the bonus with Canvas is you can do the multiple due dates as well. So if you do have a student who uh, needs an extension or whatnot, then you can actually set them as a different due date. I know in Blackboard, I would tell my students, yes, it's okay if you take the exam tomorrow. It's going to tell you it's late, but I will still accept it because <laughs> you just can't change the due date for only one student. Okay, so grading assignments in Canvas. Um, you don't have to dig through as many menus to get to that needs grading. It's actually very in your face when you come into Canvas. When you're on that main dashboard page, when you've just come into Canvas and you see your beautiful colorful courses, um, over on the right-hand side, you'll see this to-do list. And so this is going to list out 
all of your courses that have something to be graded for. They might not even be due yet. Maybe they're due later this week, but some students have already submitted them. So you'll see it come up in your to-do list. Now, if I clicked on one individual class, then over on the right-hand side, I'll just see what needs to be graded for that specific course. And uh, then I'll also see what are some of the next things that are going to be coming up in that class. And this is more like what the students would see, right? Like here's your next assignment that's going to be due. So they have a view that looks kind of like that as well. And then when you're in the actual grading program, it's called Speed Grader, and it gives you all sorts of great features. You can you see one student at a time and their name would be listed up here at the top. And so you can easily just arrow to the side to see the other students. And um, let's see, you can annotate, you can highlight, add text, cross through the text. You can put a box around it. You can even write and draw on it. And you can do a lot of these using an iPad as well, which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, you can also use a rubric. So this one, I don't have a rubric, but I have an example pulled up to show you. So in this one, I would just give them their score. And again, I have my comments that I can even give them comments if I'm not ready to grade it yet. Like, hey, this doesn't look complete. Can you try again? Um, I can do all of that before I even grade it. And you also have some other options down here. You can attach a file back to them. So if you used your own paper rubric or you edited their paper and you wanna you know, re-upload it for them here, you can do that. Um, this little speaker is actually just uh, text to type. So kind of like if you use Siri to type your messages up for you, if you push this button and talk, it'll turn it into text for you. Uh, so that's kind of a quick, easy way to get your type down. And then you actually have the option to do a video response to them as well. It's just your webcam on you, but you can say, hey, this was really great. I just wanted to mention, you know, two things real quick. So if you kind of like the personalization of that, you have that option. Uh, someone asked me yesterday how long of a video message you can leave. Let's just say I let it run for 15 minutes yesterday and then finally decided to turn it off. So you can at least leave them a 15 minute message if you think you need to go that long. And um, so it doesn't really seem to be too limited there. Now, um, grading brings us towards the conversation of a grade book. And before I show you the grade book, I feel like there's one step you need to do to get your grade book organized. And that would be in your assignments tab. So again, this is where you can see a list of all of your assignments. And what you wanna do here is you wanna add groups. Remember I mentioned those assignment groups and when you create a new assignment, you can say, well, I want this to go towards their lab score, okay? So you can see this is for one of my classes and I have them all collapsed. So all the assignments are in here, but if I have them collapsed, I kind of have a nice view of the whole course. And I was able to set my percentage for each of these for the total course score. Um, if you've already created some assignments, and then you go in afterwards and make your group, it's super simple to just grab your assignment and slide it into the group you want it to go into. So you can move things around very easily also. You also have the option, um, these, some of these little features, these buttons over here would allow you to um, set rules, like you could drop the lowest quiz score for everyone or things like that if you wanted to do so. So that's how you would get your grade book set up to calculate your total score for you the way that you want. Now, when we look at the grade book, um, I did recently learn that uh, you might not be able to completely hide the student's name. So if you're going to have your grade book open and other people see it, you can at least collapse it all the way to this small. <laughs> so your grade book is still kind of private. And then I just took a screenshot here to show you all the different ways that you could organize the view of how all of the assignments come up in your grade book. Let's see. So when you have assignments from external links, can you transfer the grades like from Edpuzzle? Yes, absolutely. One of the things is if you just created it as an assignment, if you remember, I showed you all of the different ways that they um, could submit an online assignment, but you could put other things like you could build the assignment up, but say it's going to be a paper submission. That way you've at least created a spot for it in the grade book and you can go and put your grades in later. And same thing with something like Edpuzzle. You could say um, that there's no submission in Canvas, um, but you know you built that place for you to put your grades in. 
so again, here's kind of the list. You can alphabetize them. You can do them by the newest to oldest assignment, point value, which ones have you know only counted for a point, uh, one point to 100 points, or organize them by modules. Um, you'll also notice the gradebook's kind of auto, uh, automatically color-coded. So all of these red ones are where people did not submit anything. And then the blue ones are where they, their submission was late. So you kind of get that nice visual. And this is kind of starting from the left side of the grade book. And then again, if you've set up your um, groups, your assignment groups, then when you get all the way over to the right side of your grade book, um, you'll see each of those groups that you set up and you see it even tells you again, what percentage of your grade it was. So you can see how did they do as a whole, you know, specifically in one section. And this is really helpful. I know some programs, no matter what grade you get in the class, some programs have a rule that you cannot pass the class if your exam average is say below a 75%. So no matter how great their total score is, you know, you might still need to come in and sort through your exams to make sure that everybody uh, made that um, score that they needed. I do believe students can see these calculated columns. I don't know if you can confirm that, Kathy, that students see these calculated columns also. You're saying yes. Uh, another thing um, that is on the student side, so I haven't played with it too much, is Canvas has a what if, um, calculate my what if. And so students can go in there and start to say, well, what if I get a 70 on my final project? What will that make my score in the class? And so that's built in in their grade book that they can kind of play around with making sure they get the grade they're looking for. Okay, a lot of things came in. Let me pause for just a second here. Can assignments be a document that students fill out in the field and then complete and submit into Canvas for faculty to grade and sign off on? Yeah, I would say if it's a piece of paper, then they could scan it in. Or this semester, I've had a lot of students um, just take a picture with their phone and send me the image. So uh, Michael, would that give you what you need? to allow them to just submit the image or scan it in. Does Canvas calculate points, not percentages? You can choose. Um, that would work. It would work? I, th I think so. Uh, Excellent. And I'm happy to help you play around. Not on like, uh, but it would be uh, helpful just to have that more seamless. Yeah, thing. yeah, for sure. We could work on that together, Michael. We could try and figure out what would be the best way for them to submit it. Um, as far as points versus percentages, a couple of things. So one, when you're setting up the assignment, you get to choose, you know, if you want it to be represented as a percentage or as a point value, and then you even have options like whether it's just complete versus incomplete, that kind of thing. This total column, you also have the option of shifting back and forth between having it represent as a percentage or just represent as total course points. So it should work for you regardless of which way you like to manage your gradebook. How do you hide gradebook columns in Canvas? Uh, I can try and show you this when we get online, but you have options for how you view also. So you could choose to um, say, I only wanna see lab assignments right now, or I only wanna see a certain section, and then you wouldn't see everything. Now, if you're talking about hiding from students, yes, I'm about to show you a feature where you can choose when you release the scores for students. I think that's one of my next images, but let me see what this next question is. If I currently only have a sandbook box, um, would I be able to go into Canvas and find students? Uh, I don't think so, Michael. I think they would have to be added into your course and it's not like you're just connected to them because you both have Canvas they would need to be in your course. Now, I don't know if um, anyone would allow students to come into your course to help you and them practice. So that might be a question for Kathy or Adela if yeah. that's something yeah, you need. They're currently only a, a single or two clinical groups. Okay, so, so it, it, are, you, are you asking because you want to be in Canvas right now or? Well, I, I was just thinking it might be helpful to see where they're at with their assignments, so. so, yeah. so Mike, Michael, you could be added, there are different roles, but you could be added into those courses and then you can see them that way. Okay, so I just have to ask the primary. Right, right, and we can help you with that too. Yep. So the students are already in a Canvas course and you are a 
assistant instructor on that course and you just want to be able to access them also. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so here's some of those other gradebook features that I was mentioning. Um, and this is all the way, there's a little feature on the side where you have more options. And so one of them that I really like, I always heard that can't, uh, that Blackboard was gonna offer this, but I don't think our version ever did. And that is if a student didn't do the assignment, they basically just were left without a grade in Blackboard unless you went in and manually gave them zeros. And that's really the only way it penalized them. Again, if you're, if you're taking a percentage score. Um, but in Canvas, you can choose to set it if you want that when a student doesn't submit an assignment, it automatically gives them a fill in whatever grade you want. I chose zero. Um, but also you can choose to automatically deduct points from late assignments. And so my policy is they have 24 hours after the due date uh, that they can submit it for half credit. So I set it as 50% for a day. You could do something. I know some people do rules like 10% each day it's late. And that's really kind of more what this double menu is set up to be. Like it'd be like 10% per day up to, you know, 50% total or whatever you want it to be. So those are features you set up for your entire grade book. That's not one assignment. That's, that would be the rule for your course. Likewise, you guys were asking about hiding from students and hiding the assignments of the grades from students. Uh, and so again, we have this menu that had late policies and then that had this grading posting policy as well. And so the default is that it's going to automatically post the grades while you're grading. So you grade one student, they get theirs, you get to the next student, they get theirs. But you can change it to manually post the grades. And again, this is set for the whole course, not just one assignment where you can grade everybody first and then you would just have to remember to go back in there and release the grades to the students. Does the faculty have the ability to override the grade letter of oh, the grade later? Um, well, you're going to choose what grade you go and put in banner web. So I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it would affect your calculation of the grade, if you would override the calculation, but you could certainly add your own column in as well and say, this is what I'm giving you as your final grade. Um, I do where they can add a couple of points of extra credit onto their final grade and Blackboard, or excuse me, Canvas doesn't really add that for me. So I have their total column and then I build in a column next to it where I just type in like, this is the actual grade I am you know, using as your finalized grade for the class. Does that I mean, answer your question no, about overwriting? That's not what I was talking about. That's not okay. what I was talking about, Brittany. What I was Sorry, talking about yeah. is if a student hands in, doesn't hand in the assignment, they automatically get a zero. You only have it set to one submission. Um, can you go back in and the student hands you, you graded the assignment and allowed the student to be late. Could you go back in and enter in the grade because it's already been assigned to zero? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Now, I've, I've had to tweak that a little bit because I am kind of trying out some of grading options. Um, and in the speed grader program that I showed you, I might have given them a five out of 10 and then speed grader goes, nope, it's a zero because that's the policy you have in place. And so then for that student, I had to go back to the actual grade book and manually put it in that spot what I wanted it to be. So I had to kind of like force it into the override just a little bit. But yes, you can end up getting the grade there that you want to have there. Thank you for clarifying. I was on a very different path. <laughs> I was going to say similar to Blackboard where you can go in and just kind of manually enter a grade for a student in grade book. You can do the same thing in Canvas. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can type it right in there in the little text box in the grade book. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Great. Okay. So just a couple other features in Canvas as well. Now Blackboard did have a calendar. I don't know how many people were actually aware of that because it's kind of hidden um, unless you pulled that tool out for your class but uh, the calendar is just there and part of Canvas where everybody can more easily see it. You can see that it's color-coded for each of your courses. And of course you can see a list of everything that's going to be due and by when. Um, as the instructor, you could click on any one of these and edit the assignment directly from here. Uh, you can also grab one and drag it. So if you know maybe you hadn't gotten to that material yet in class and you're like, well, we're gonna move this to be due on Thursday. You just slide it on over. And so it's an easy way to edit the assignments. Um, it's certainly a great way for the students to be able to see what all they have going on for the week. And then you can even see it in an hourly view throughout the day, which for me as the instructor just looks kind of weird and overwhelming. But for the students, assuming they were in a bunch of different classes, 
that maybe had different due dates and due time, um, this would be a great way for them to come in on Wednesday and be like, let's see, I should probably tackle these assignments first before I move on to the stuff that's due at the end of the day, right? So just a nice visual. And then Canvas also has a super fun attendance program. You can either choose to just have it listed in the alphabetical order and check off the students like so, or you can build your seating chart. And then you would just click on each student, you know, for uh, present or absent, et cetera. Uh, we were talking that this is really great. Uh, you get the visual as well for right now with COVID. And uh, if we need to go back and do any contact tracing, um, if I knew who was and wasn't in class this day, you know, who was near this student that I might need to reach out to and contact those kinds of things. So that's kind of helpful. Can you make notes in the roll call? No, oh, excuse me. I, I don't think so. And that is a feature I really wish there were also because they're like exactly like you said, I'd like to make a note about why the student wasn't here this day. Like if they reached out to me and let me know. Um, and then also, you know, some of my students are like, oh, well, I go by John. And so I'd like to be able to adjust that on here. And I don't think you can. So it's a cool little feature, but it's still a little bit limited. <laughs> and, and that goes that goes into each day that you need. Role. Yeah. So you build the seating chart once and then you pull it up for the day of the week that your class is. And I'll show you an example in just a minute when we go into Canvas, but they'll be green and red for if they were present or absent. Um, and I can just go back to any day on the calendar and quickly view what that day looks like. Thanks. Yeah. And then finally, I've, I kind of mentioned it a little bit already, but I just wanted to show you what the app looks like as far as downloading it. There's a student app and a teacher app and actually also a parent app. <laughs> Um, but these are the ones that we would be utilizing and I'll pull up and show you in just a minute. So, um, that's the end of my comparison. Let me go ahead and actually escape the PowerPoint and bring you into the actual course. Now, um, a couple things that I just want to highlight that we were talking about. So here you can see my dashboard. Um, and it even divides it out by those that are published and then courses I haven't published yet. I have a lot of classes that start the second half of the semester. Um, and then here's that to-do list I was telling you about for all of my classes grading. And then if I go into one specific class, my to-do list is going to change to be specifically what's due for me to grade in that class. Okay, you have all the choices of what you want your home screen to be, whether as soon as they click into your class, you want it to come to a page like this, that's kind of a welcome to the class, or if you want it to go directly to the announcements page or right into your modules, you get to set that, you get to pick that. The announcements, as I was telling you about, they'll kind of just list down the page for you. Um, let me just start a new announcement. And so you have your text box that you can, you know, put whatever you need to here. And then you have this insert menu. I can do hyperlinks going to external sites. And then this is where I have all of my course links as well. I have any of the pages that I've made and that's where like my lecture videos are, my assignments, my quizzes, et cetera. And I can even search them. So I could say, don't forget to do chapter three quiz, right? And so it's just gonna link it in right there for me as I go. Now, if I had more than one section in this course, you would see right here, I could choose if I wanna send this announcement to just one of the classes, like, hey, all of your stuff's due on Monday, let me send that out to you. Or I could choose all the sections, et cetera. So um, lots that you can do there right from announcements. And let's go look at that attendance real quick. Oh, actually, let me pick a class that actually has an attendance. <laughs> Here we go. So when I go to my attendance page, I would just go, so I have my seating chart and I can edit it and drag them around if I need to change that. But I would just come to my calendar and go to whatever day I wanted and I can see what my attendance looks like on that day. Let's see, what else? What were some of the other things that uh, came up? Uh, let me show you uh, the assignment rubrics. Okay, so I mentioned we could do rubrics, but I hadn't put one up yet. So here's my whole assignment that I built up, and then I decided to add a rubric. 
And so you can make it as detailed as you want. You can have as many different kind of grading categories as you want and give them the point values that you want, et cetera. Okay. So, and you can have this all be viewable to the student ahead of time. This is a pretty massive one because this is a take home final exam. <laughs> but then when you're ready to grade it, you'd go into the speed grader and uh, you would see their whole submission here and you could scroll through it. I can give them a grade, but I can also view the rubric. And so you can even change how much of your screen is taken up by their assignment versus the rubric. And you can scroll them separately. That's a little bit different than Blackboard, right? Like I can scroll their whole assignment and I can scroll my whole rubric um, and they each kind of move on their own. When I'm in the rubric, I can easily just click on the sections that I want to grade them. Or maybe if I feel like it was kind of in between, I can even say, no, I'm actually gonna give you a 7.5 for this section. And I can even leave a comment, you know, partial credit and explain why. And then I would just go down the page, fill out my rubric and hit save. And it would add the score up at the top for that student. So that's kind of nice. Uh, let me, uh, while, do, go do ahead. You, do uh, students have that view as well? Not the speed grader, right? Because mm. that's me grading the assignment, but they will get to see, remember when I showed you the view of their submission and they could kind of see it and see if I had graded it or not, they'd be able to pull it up at that point. And they, they can look at the assignment and see if I've written or highlighted directly on the assignment. And they can also see my grading rubric and see exactly how I graded them and where the comments are. Okay, so they can't see the rubric kind of side by side. Oh, see the rubric and see the assignment at the same time. I actually yeah. don't know the answer to that. Okay. I feel like for them, the rubric would almost be something that opened in a new box. And I might have to play with that admittedly to um, yeah. really see what it looks like on the student side. Just curious. Now I'm going to um, switch for just a second. We'll come back to my screen uh, in a minute and you can tell me exactly what you wanna go and play around with. But I am going to show you my iPad, maybe. Here we go, I'm getting the screen mirroring set up. Okay, so do you guys see my iPad screen? And you can change it to, you know, whichever way you like to hold it. And so this is what your dashboard menu would look like. Um, so again, you have your courses um, over on the side, still color coded, et cetera. And you've got the little courses tab on the bottom left if you uh, ever need to get to that. And then you have your to-do menu here as well, which is just like we had before. If I click on that, oh, it's taking a minute to catch up. Come on, screen share. Let me stop sharing and try one more time. I moved on, but my screen did not. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, so now I had clicked on my to-do list. And so again, you can see my great list of things that need to be graded. Now, if I click on one of those, uh, again, I see this menu where I see the student's submission. I can um, use this little drag menu here to take it over and give them whatever grade I think that they earn. I can click on comments and leave them some comments, et cetera. But since this student submitted a file, I actually have the option of doing all those great things like highlighting. Uh, I can add comments to the sections that I've highlighted. Um, I can even, again, if you have a stylus, write directly on their assignment, whatever I want to do. So it's, it can kind of turn it back into like you're grading a paper, right? If you're one of those people who really likes to be able to be hands-on and kind of touch on those assignments, uh, it can be really beneficial to have an iPad or other type of tablet. Now, I just wanna also show you, cause this is what it would look like for students who are on their tablets as well. When you're in your dashboard and you click on a class, it's gonna still give you that left uh, menu and then same thing, if I click on modules, I'm gonna get my whole list of modules here where I can expand and collapse any one of them and come directly to whatever it is that I want to open. And then it'll open in the main portion of the window. And then I still, uh, like you can see at the bottom here, have the previous and next where I can just hit that button to go from side to side and see which things I need to look at, see which things I need to submit, et cetera. 
So that's just kind of a quick preview of how the iPad could work for either the students or the uh, faculty. So let's go back to my actual class. Is it back to sharing my web screen? Yes. Excellent, thank you. And what kinds of things would you guys like to see? Here is the assignments tab, where again, um, you can set your scores for each group. It's just as easy as hitting add a group. You give it a name and you tell it what percentage of the total grade you want it to be. And then, like I said, you can easily grab an assignment and move it from one category to another and it'll update in the grade book for you. Let me not mess up my class too much. <laughs> When you are in your modules, oh, how do you add an, how do you add a menu item to the course menu? So you're talking about over here on the left hand side. This is the one part that is kind of behind the scenes. When you're in your course, you would go all the way down to the bottom for settings. And of course, there will be trainings for you on these steps when you're in Canvas. Okay. Again, if I had multiple sections here, I would still be able to manage those from here as well. But it's this navigation tab. And so you can see I've chosen to only have this select number of things available for my students to access. And then you just take things and you move them down below if you wanna hide them from students, or if there was something from this list that you wanted your students to be able to see, you would just drag it up and put it up where they would have access to it. So it's that easy um, to add them. And then there's even a menu of apps for other tools that you can add into your course, things that Canvas and UIW have allowed to be added into a course. So that's kind of how you would build this menu. Again, same thing, you can change what order they come up in as well. Um, will students have access to Canvas training soon? Kathy, are there any plans for students to get Canvas training? So what, what we'll do for students um, to start out with is uh, it's either it will be the end of February or the beginning of March. We'll make available a, sort of a, a student orientation um, a course that will go just it'll go to every student. But we have to make sure that we get the word out for them. Um, and it's it's um, very kind of it's pretty short, but it, ha it goes through all the things that they need to know, like submitting an assignment and looking at the gradebook and the app and that kind of thing. And then we'll work with the. Um, student groups to see um, what kind of direct um, one of our, our people is um, in contact with the student government to see what else um, they need. So we have to, yeah. Uh, I will say, you know, since my classes are in Canvas this semester, I've just kind of built that in to the beginning of the week, kind of, uh, especially week one, walking them through, this is Canvas, this is how you're going to work through these modules. Like I mentioned to you, how they can open it up and start with the first item and hit the next button to work their way through them. I'm getting great feedback. And, you know, obviously these students are half in Blackboard and half in Canvas right now between their classes. And a lot of them are saying you're really enjoying Canvas. So that's good to hear. I did wanna show you um, how easy it is to just add a new module you just hit the add module button and we'll name this one our new module. Looks like maybe that's something I've used before. And we've added it in, it's gonna go down to the bottom. And so now I can either drag things from other places to move them in here, or I hit that little plus button over on the side and I can choose what it is that I want to add next. Like if I wanna do a welcome page and I can start a new page and I can say, you know, intro to chapter five or four, whatever I wrote here. <laughs> and so then it creates it. And then I can go into that item and edit it and say, you know, whatever I wanna say here, you know, here's what we'll be learning, etc. okay? And so then I'm gonna bounce back to my module. That's me creating my first kind of page for this module. Well, they all expanded for a second there. So let me wait for it to catch up. There we go. They're collapsed and I'm back down to my new module. Maybe I've already got some assignments and quizzes created. And so all I need to do is say, okay, the next thing I want them to do in the module is this quiz. So I just find it from the list and add it. Maybe I have you know, some other files that I just need to bring into this module or whatever. So you can either create assignments and quizzes right from here, or you can add them in. 
Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is how right now it's this kind of gray no button. Um, but all I would have to do is hit the that button and it turns into a green check mark. And I've now published this for my class. So that lets me know whether it's something they can see or they cannot see. So I can close the whole module so they can't see anything in it. This is the one thing you have to be careful about. You'll see these are still green, but I know that they can't actually see it because the main module is fully closed off to them. Here's an opposite example of that for extra credit opportunities. So far, I've only launched one of my extra credit opportunities for them. So there's all these other ones I can give them access to later. But right now, when they see their extra credit opportunities section, all they see is one. Okay, so let me back up here because lots of texts have been coming in. Can you import grades from Excel CSV? Yes, you can. And it's a similar process. Uh, you would go into your grade book. Put myself on the spot here for a second. Actions, import. And so it'd be that same process of making sure that your CSV file is formatted correctly to upload uh, the, uh, the grades specific for that. What are the memory limitations? And does this connect with Stream like the Blackboard site? So as far as Stream, um, I don't know that Blackboard is, quote, connected to Stream. You're just adding that connection yourself, right? By either bringing in the hyperlink or embedding the videos. But yes, that's the same exact thing we're doing in Canvas. And Stream or something outside of Canvas is still the recommended video uh, repository. Uh, there's still the concerns with if we recorded all of our videos, hours and hours of video in Canvas, that would be going over capacity. So it's best to record and have your videos elsewhere and be connecting them back in. Let's see. Yes, the third presentation will be the same. <laughs> awesome. Uh, somebody said something about the two different kinds of quizzes. Somebody was asking about the two oh, yeah. quizzes. So yeah, do you want me to talk about that? Yeah, why don't you? I'll click around a little bit and you talk. Okay. So what happened really was midstream, we went. They um, Canvas went from classic quizzes to new quizzes. So we kept them both because some of the pilot people had started with classic quizzes, right? Um, but 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 if you haven't started making quizzes at all, um, you you would want to go to new quizzes because that's just what it says. It's the newer. Um, it's just the newer way to make quizzes in Canvas. So there's new, different features and that kind of thing. Um, but again, <clears throat> classic quizzes are there is kind of the legacy now, and then new quizzes would be the way to go if you're new to Canvas. So Kathy, is is there a reason or a need to convert our classic quizzes over to new quizzes? Like, will they transition at some point, or because all of these quizzes that I have in here from past semester are in the classic mode? Right. So um, let, me, let me just check on their plans for that. And, I, and okay. then I would get back to you. Right. Yeah. Because, right. I'll get so back. We'll just peek real quick at what a new quiz looks like, which again, if you're just um, starting, this is the system that you'd want to use. Um, you have the same menu, right? It, we talked yesterday about if you have quizzes and you have tests and you want both of those to be different portions of their grade, this is where you would tag that into their assignment group. Um, and same thing, you can allow different attempts, you can assign to certain students, et cetera. Um, and then every time you do something, you'll notice you can either just save it and then the students won't see it yet, or you can save and publish and that would give it that green check mark where the students would see it also. Pardon me. Jimmy was dropping off a, a computer monitor for me. Uh, and then when you come in here, you would just start hitting this plus button and choosing the kinds of questions you want to add and build. We're working on different ways that you can import questions in. If you have certain files from your textbook providers, like QDI, zip files, and things like that, you can import those in here still. Anything you currently have in Blackboard will be able to be imported in. So, so you don't always have to build your uh, exams from scratch if you have them elsewhere. But here's where you would build the test. And then you also have this settings where you can change all of the different features of that quiz or test. Um, once the test has run, you have your options for coming and doing your item analysis. And this is also the menu you would come to to moderate if you needed to give an individual student extra time on the exam, et cetera. 
let's see, somebody asked about um, a tab for email. And so, yes, if you see over here on my left menu, kind of the only thing I've done over here so far is gone to dashboard and moved into classes directly from there. But this is also where you can access that calendar and you do have an inbox here as well. And um, again, any emails that a student sends you from here will go directly to your email and you can reply to them directly from your email. But you have them all kind of archived here as well. And you can start a new message from here um, you would have to select which course you're sending that message to, and you can even choose which students specifically you want to message. I would probably use an announcement in the class if you were going to send it to the whole class, but if you wanted to message, you know, a handful of students about something, this is just another way you can access them. You do also have the feature from the gradebook where you can click message students who haven't turned in this assignment yet, and so you can send them all a quick reminder. Let's see, a course menu item hidden from students, but not disabled completely. That's a good question because I know when you slide them down to not visible to students, I guess, do they all just stay on the bottom of your menu here, but stu the student's menu would stop higher and then all the things that come below, these are the things that I've hid from students. Is that right, Kathy? You want to show a student what the student view oh yeah sure let me click this little glasses menu over here is the student view so there we go you can see what they saw but you saw my menu went much further so all those items that we saw in settings under navigation and i slid them down where i didn't want the students to be able to see them they still show up on my menu but not for the students Let's see, how much lead time will we have in the fall to get familiar with the new system? Time to start now, now's your lead time. <laughs> and and I, would, I would add that um, the fall courses will be in Canvas, you know, we'll bring them in at the end of March. So they'll be there and you could start actually working on your fall course in March if you feel so inclined, so. Yeah, and so that's a great uh, benefit that the uh, instructional technology team is actually going to be bringing your courses over from Blackboard for you. Awesome, go team. Uh, if you are working on anything now, um, you do have options to import exists. So I just came right into my course. This is my home screen and you can see over on the right in the instructor view, I can import existing content. And so if you were in Blackboard and you wanted to like export your exams, you could come here and say, I want to bring in a Blackboard zip file. Uh, as I mentioned, there's other kinds of files like the QTI zip files that certain textbook providers will give you their um, exams in. And so you can pull those over into here as well. Um, you can also copy your Canvas course from one session, uh, one semester to the next. Oh, and one more quick bonus that I've been playing with a lot is you can actually copy one assignment. Like once you make an assignment, you can hit duplicate on it and then just change the due date, change you know the features for the next week. You can also say copy that specific assignment over to another class. Um, and so those are outside of, like in Blackboard, you would have had to go through the whole course copy process, but this is just in one assignment you can copy. Will summer courses remain in Blackboard? Not my understanding. It sounds like really after this semester, the next time you teach, whether it's summer or whether it's fall, the next time you teach your classes are going to be in Canvas. One group submission and the grades are automatically entered for all the students. Yeah, sure. So in um, your Canvas course, go ahead. Under people, this is where you'll see a list of your class, but then you also have the option to come to groups. And so you can even make different group sets you know, if they have a lab group, but then they have a presentation group and exactly that. Then when you set up the assignment, you would say it's a group assignment and tell it which, which groups to chunk together. You can even do group discussion boards, et cetera. Can you share exams, quizzes, or test banks between courses? Yes. So similar to what I was just saying, um, you can export material from one class into another. You can either copy the entire course or just choose specifically 
what it is that you want to move over. Mm -hmm. And so I can choose all content or I can select specific content. Let's, oh wait, that class hasn't met yet. So it's not going to have anything in it. Select specific content. And then I believe on my next, here we go. Now it's asking me to select my content. So now I can specifically choose that I wanna bring over my quizzes and my question banks or something like that and make that copy. I mean, this is Rachel. Can you bring over an individual quiz? So, so let's say mid semester, I create a new quiz and I want to copy it to another course. So I've done, I've been doing that this semester with assignments so far. Let me see. Copy to look, I can pick another class and I can even say where I want it to go in that class. Perfect. So, Thank yeah. you. So, yep. That's from the assignment or the quiz over here, the three dots on the side. Just go to copy to. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's the first time. See, and this is, we were talking about this yesterday. This is one of the great things about Canvas is the buttons are there. Like they tell you what they're going to do and they actually do what you think you want them to do. So it's pretty user friendly to just get in and click around and, and find out what kinds of features it has. Okay. When I move attendance down to hide from students, it disappears completely from my course menu. Menu item must be listed in the top navigation group, which you can click it and the menu pops up to enable or disable. Okay, okay, so you got that one figured out. Parent course for two sections, does Canvas allow me to build such a course? That is something that you would set up with Adela. Um, and I know this semester they did it as a default. If you had multiple sections of the same course, they automatically built it into one for you. Um, and for some people that works for my case, it didn't because I have online and in person in first half of the semester and second half of the semester. So none of them really, none of them really went together, but there are absolutely great times to do that. And that is something that Adela and the team that's pulling things over would be able to, to do for you. Yeah. And, and, uh, Brittany, actually people, uh, faculty will be able to do it themselves. It's called cross listing and they'll have the choice to do it or not. Yeah. And they can come and do that in their settings. Right. Mm-hmm. Cross list of course, right. Good, so you could come here and you can add a section. Mm -hmm. Or you can, you can take two sections if you wanna merge them. Is that, you know, we call, it's called cross listing. Okay. And cool. like, like you said, we did it for you, but it wasn't very popular. So we're not gonna do it. <laughs> there we are learned. times when I would love we it. Learned. It just coincidentally did not work for those people. <laughs> no, it did work for a lot of people. So we're not doing it again. Yeah. Um, let's see, is Blackboard going to stay so that faculty can pull content from it? So Blackboard, once, once our contract with Blackboard ends on May 31st, so we'll, after that, we'll enter another contract where we have archive access. So after May 31st, if you need something from your course, you'll ask Adela for it and she'll pull it for you. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. What other questions do you guys have? So Kathy, are you saying that like, for example, my, if I'm in a spring course right now teaching and it's not on Canvas, but I don't intend to, I don't usually do anything with it until fall, develop it. So are you saying that I have to get everything from Adela or will I have the ability to view it? Uh, so after May 31st, no, Adela will have to get that. Um, she'll have to get it, get it for you. Yeah. But this spring course will be brought over for her? No. Before or, no, what, the courses that we're, that we're bringing over are spring 2020, fall 2020, and summer 2020. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anything that's built this semester would need to be requested to be pulled over. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Good clarification. It's just a timing issue um, mm -hmm. of when the semester ends and how long it takes to get it pulled over. So that's why, that's why we couldn't do summer or spring 2021. And that's something we have the ability to do on our own. <laughs> if you so choose, you can go into just like you do a Blackboard course copy, you have the option to export a course in there. And again, it saves it as a Blackboard zip file. And then just like I showed you, you would come in to import course content and say you have a Blackboard zip file you want to bring in. It's not 100% pretty and ready for you to go at that point, because as you saw, the formatting is a little bit different between the two, but it gets everything moved over for you. And then you could tweak as needed to organize things where you want them to go, et cetera. And, and also, if there is a spring 2021 course you want brought over, um, we can bring it over ourselves manually in May. 
when the court, you know, so you would request that we could bring it manually over for you. So what we're doing right now could be brought over. Mm -hmm. So on Friday, um, we're, we'll send out with the ATAC group, which is Academic Technology Advisory Committee, we'll send out our, um, our Canvas like link um, to our uh, Canvas webpage. And it kind of has that information. And there will, there will be a form there if you want a course moved over that's not in fall 2020, spring 2020, or summer 2020. You can um, fill out that form and then we'll bring it over for you annually, which is. <coughs> So that might be the spring 2021 courses. That's what you might be thinking about. Mm -hmm. We'll be getting a form. Pardon me? We'll be getting a form. <laughs> a yeah. form. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions about that, about just the migration or anything like that? Actually, all the summer courses will be here. Summer 2020 courses will be here. They'll be in Canvas, I'll just tell you right now, February 5th. So we'll be reaching out to you, um, summer faculty, if we know, who, we'll find out who the summer faculty are. And that's kind of our focus is to help you right away in February, get go, get started and working with your course, your materials. But again, again, um, the fall 2020 courses will be available at the end of March. So that again, will be a time, you know, if you so choose, you could hop in and we can help you with your course as well. Get your Blackboard course formatted for Canvas. So if, if there aren't any other questions, um, just thank you so much for, for coming. Brittany will be with, um, again next Friday, right, Susan? Uh, yeah. Yes. Friday. Same thing. If you want to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, have a question. I have a question for Brittany, but I'd like to talk to her after. Yeah, no problem. I'll see you behind. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, um, everyone. for And thank you to Brittany. That's just sure. always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bravo. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> and thank you. And have a good after great afternoon. Thanks, Brittany.